Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're talking about role level security, but the purpose of this video is not to teach you role level security, but rather to help you understand how role level security works. As usual, I will post this model in my blog, so look for the link in the description of this video. So if you're trying to understand how role level security works, you really need to understand a handful of concepts. Concept number one, when you log into a Power BI dataset, whether you use Power BI or Excel or any other means of connecting to it, Power BI knows who you are. So we know when you connect to our model, we know who you are. How that works is not super important. Let's just remember that anytime you log in into any Power BI dataset, we know who you are. Specifically, we know your email address. Number two, we have an ability in Power BI to automatically apply a filter when you log in. Moreover, we have a way to group those filters. We can have one or more filters, and we can group those filters in what we call a role. So all role leaves is a way to group multiple filters. So what do I mean by grouping filters? Well, think about a sales data set. Uh, in my sales data set, I might have some products that I sell to customers over time. If I am a salesperson, I may only be able to see certain customers. If I'm a brand manager, I may only be able to see certain brands. So then, depending on who you are, I might create a filter that's based on the customer value, or I could create a filter that's based on the product that we sold to the customer. Or I could create a filter that allows me to mix and match. I could say, I can only see filters for product A in Mexico. So how we define those filters and how we group those filters together is what the role is. So now we know who you are, we can create some filters that are automatically applied every time you connect to the model. And the third thing or fourth thing that you need to understand is that we can assign you to one or N roles. And then as you get assigned to those roles, that's at, at that point, Power BI knows which filters to, to apply when you log in. So just when I create a sales role, at that time when I define that role, I don't really know who will be assigned to that role. So I, when I'm in Power BI, I create the role, I create the filters, I basically define and develop the entire experience, but at that time, I do not assign people to that role. Then what happens? I publish Power BI to, I publish my Power BI model to powerbi.com, then I go into the dataset security, and then at that point, I will see which roles I have defined for my model, and I can assign a user or Active Directory group to one or more roles. That's about it for theory, so let's roll up our sleeves and start walking through those concepts in practice. So the first thing we need to figure out is how does Power BI know who you are? Turns out in DEX we have a very handy function called user principal name. And every time you display the contents of that function, if you create a measure with that function in it, then you'll be able to know who the person is who is logged into Power BI. In my case, I've created a variable or a measure called current user, and I assigned the value of user principal name to that measure. I also created a card control here in my report in which I display the contents of that measure. So right now, when I just open up Power BI, here you see my the name of the variable, current user, and the value, Andre at XYZ, which is my email address. When you open up that file on your end, you will see your email address in this box. You may want to make the font a little smaller so you can see your, your email address in its entirety. The problem is you want to be able to test it, not just for yourself, but for other users as well. So we got to be able to emulate other users when they log into Power BI and see if the rules that we've implemented with our role level securities work. So we will be doing all of that stuff in just a few minutes. Now let's talk about how we can actually create those filters. The way you do it is you make sure that you have modeling options selected on your ribbon, and then you click on manage roles button. But before we jump into the modeling of the security roles, let's talk about the data set that we're trying to secure. In our case, I'm reusing the same data set that I just used for my HR salary masking videos. And uh, this is a very simple data set. Here I have employees, um, and their employee ID is in column number one. Then for each employee, I know what the manager ID is for that employee. 
And then we have some information about the employee, such as name, salary, position, and so forth. Now, in my prior video, I talk about how I've made some enhancement to this data set using child, parent-child hierarchies to be able to uh, enable this sort of functionality where I can select an employee that I would like to analyze. And uh, in my right uh, table, I see all of the employees that roll up into my selection. So when I select the CEO, I see all of the employees. When I select the CFO, I only see the contents of the finance department. And if I click on the Sarah, who is the VP of HR, I only be able to see everybody who is in HR. So what I want to be able to do is implement security in such a way that depending on how people log in, the contents of this selection is reflected based on their security access. So I want to implement three roles. And the first role is what I call declarative role. I'm just going to hard code the people who I want to see. So I'm going to create a role called finance. And whoever I assign to this role, I only want them to be able to see Tim on this list. So I'm just going to hard code this. It's not going to be a dynamic role. I'm going to go in, hard code the name of Tim. And every time people log in with this role, regardless of what their email address is, they will have exactly the same result. This approach of hard coding is effectively me declaring what the rule is. So you could think of it as a declarative security. The second rule that I would like to implement is dynamic. Basically what I want to do is shrink this list to correspond to the person who has logged in. So if Tim logs in, I only want Tim to see his name. If Sarah logs in, I only want her to see her name. So it's a very simple filtering. If I have a table that feeds this slicer, then I have the email address for all of these managers. All I want to do is filter the table to whoever the current user is. Very simple, but dynamic because whoever logs in, their email address will be different and therefore the selection on the slicer will be different. So it's a little bit more complicated the prior scenario than declarative, but it's now no longer declarative, it's dynamic. So it's a very simple dynamic security rule. And the third rule is a lookup rule. So in some cases, what you want to be able to do is you want to give certain individuals access to multiple products, multiple brands, or multiple employees or multiple departments. So in our case, in our HR department, we have this lady, Jane, she's an HR data uh, analyst. And in her scope of responsibility are two departments, CFO and HR. And we would like to give her access to all of the Sarah's and Teams direct reports. So we're going to create a map that lists everything that she's supposed to see. And we're going to use that lookup, multi-row lookup to be able to figure out what we can see on this manager's list. So when Jane logs in, we would like her to see two rows, one for Sarah and one for Tim. So now that you understand what we're trying to do, let's take a look at how I implemented those three roles. Again, all I need to do is click on manage roles and that'll bring up a window for me to see what my roles are. So here you can click on create to add a new role. In my case, I already have three roles created and the first one will be finance. So as you remember, for the very first role, what we want to do is we would like to limit our slicer only to one name, Tim. So our slicer is fed from the manager table. So we need to create a filter on the manager's table that's hard coded to the email of Tim. So let's see, let's see how I did it. So the way this things work, you can click on create to create a new role, or you can click on each already created role. And then within that, you will see a little filter sign that indicates that this table does have a filter. A lot of times what you will see is you will have an admin role an admin role will have no filters. So whoever you assign to that role, they will be able to see all of the data. So that filter icon is pretty handy as you're trying to figure out what the security roles that have been implemented for a particular model. So in my case, for the finance, the very first role, I've only implemented one filter because you see that we have four tables in our model and only one table has a filter icon next to it. And in that table, we have an email field. So here's my email field. And I'm just hard coding that value to team at test.com. So let's assume that this is a test company. So everybody in this company has an email extension at test.com. Please know that that rule does not have any dynamic content. So we're just hard coding that value. So how can we test it? So the way we test it is we got to click on view as, and then we can log in as another user which in our case doesn't make any difference because we're not specifying anything that's specific to our user. 
So we don't have to specify in our user. We just need to say finance and click OK. Now that filter has been automatically applied, but we have an unusual behavior. And I want to make sure you guys understand that. So we still see Sarah, but we do not see any data for Sarah. Why is it? The reason uh, for this behavior is the following, that the way slicers work is they will retain the prior value regardless of whether you can see it or not. If I click off Sarah, click on Tim, the value for Sarah will go away. Watch. That's just the, some people call it bug. Some people call it a um, default behavior. But if the slicer has something selected and then that selection is not available given your security context, you will still be able to see that value in a slicer. However, your data is still secure. Why do I think my data is still secure? Well, let's take a look at the manager table. Remember, we applied a filter there. Before, I had a bunch of values in there that fed into the slicer. I can just look into my data set now, and you see in the manager's table, I can only see one row. If I were to click on Stop Viewing, which will remove that filter and remove that role from being active, I should be able to see all records in my table, and that's exactly what we see. We see all of the rows now in the manager table. Let's take a look at what our manager's table looks like. So here in this table, we have employee ID, employee, their level, and we have their email address. So for our second rule, what we would like to do is we can only see my name on that list. So if I am Sarah, when I log in, I should only see Sarah. So that rule is going to be very easy to implement. I know who I am using my current user variable. So I just need to filter this table to the value stored in that measure. And that is exactly what I've done here. So for the manager's table, we see the filter sign here. So we know that this is just for this table. We're going to filter the email column in that table to the value stored in the current user measure. Very simple. So this is a dynamic expression now because the current user value will be different for every user who logs in. Therefore, that list of managers will be different for whoever's logged in. Let's see how we can test it now. So the way we're going to test it we need to specify the role that we would like to test. In our case, this is going to be my department. And then we need to specify a different user who will be logging in. So we want to emulate a different user. So right now, let's try to log in as Tim. Tim's address, email address is tim at test.com. The first thing you will note that the current user now says tim at test.com. It's no longer Andre. And our table has shrunk only to Tim. And we can see Tim. Tim's employee here on the, on the employee list. So it's working pretty well. I can now log in as Sarah and see what she can see. So here I changed the email address to Sarah at test.com. Let's hit OK and see what happens. Now we see the same behavior as before. A, we see that the current user now is Sarah at test.com. Tim had been selected before, therefore it's still selected on the slicer. It's a Power BI bug slash default behavior or design behavior. And then we can select Sarah on our list and we will see only Sarah's direct reports. So our logic works. For our third role, if you remember, we wanted to give Jane access to both Sarah and Tim. So let's see how I accomplished that. The first thing that I did, I created a security lookup table. And the way this table is structured is the following. As you can see, I only have two columns. In the second column, I have the current user email. So that's the email address of the person who will log in. In our case, we said it will be Jane. And in the first column, I'm specifying the email addresses of the managers whose department salary she can see. So now you can see that this is a little bit more complicated because I'm not doing a very simple filter. I'm comparing a, a table with another table. I'm going to compare a table of manager with the table of my uh, value, values that are allowed for a user. So if I have a company with, let's say, 10 different HR users and all of those users can only see certain managers, you will just list out all of the permutations of current user and then the manager IDs to specify who can see what. And now there is another interesting thing that you need to remember, the way these filters are applied. These filters are applied into the table to which we're specifying the filter for, one row of the table at a time. So you can think of it that way as you try to understand what this DAX expression does. So what we're doing here is we're going to use the contains function. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through all rows of manager table one at a time. And for each record in the manager's table, we're going to use contains function, which will do a lookup into our mapping table. 
in our mapping table, it will find a can view user email address that corresponds to the current row in our managers table. And also it needs to find uh, in the same row, the current user email address should be the same as the email address of the users who's logged into Power BI. So basically, if it's Jane, then Jane will be passed here. So it's gonna look into a record in the security lookup table that has Sarah or Tim in the can view user email address and Jane in the current user, right? So hopefully this makes sense. So if uh, I don't wanna spend too much time on contains function, but basically what it does, it just says, go to this table, find this column, look up this value, then find this column, look up this value, and all of these match conditions should be matched. You will notice that in none of these, any of the three values, the table name is provided. And the reason we don't need to provide the table name is because contains, we specify the table name here. So then all of the odd parameters uh, after that uh, assume that those are column names in this table. And then email, because we're doing it one row at a time, assumes that email is an attribute of the manager's table. So, and then current user is just a measure. So this code will go through one record at a time from manager's table. For each table, we'll look for the corresponding match into the mapping table. And where the match exists, those roles will show. And if match does not exist, those roles will not show. So let's test and see if this works. So the first thing I will do is log in as Jane at test.com. Who is the person who has those matching values already? So here I logged in as Jane at test.com. You could see this in my card control. And as expected, I can see both Sarah and Tim on the list. We also have Jim as an HR analyst, but if you remember, Jim does not have any rows in the security mapping table. So if I log in as Jim, I should not see anything on this list. Where should I? So here I am. I typed in Jim at test.com, click OK, and let's see what happens. So we do see that I am logged in as Jim. I still see the value of Sarah. Remember why that happens? That's gonna be very frustrating every now and then. So just remember, so if you use a slicer that has a single select, this will happen. Even though Sarah is selected, that's selected because it was selected before. But as you can see, I'm not able to see anything, no employees. And if I click into my manager table, I should not see any values there. And sure enough, the table is empty. That's about as far as I wanna go into, into security in this video. One thing we did not do, we did not assign individuals to these roles. That happens in powerbi.com. So what you need to do is you need to publish this, then go into the workspace to which you publish the data set, go into data set, security, and then there in security, you will be able to see the three roles that we've created. And they can assign individual users to one, two, or all three of those roles. By the way, what happens if you assign an individual to more than two roles or more than one role? Basically, it's an or condition. If in the first role, I can see all products, but only certain customers. But in the second role, I can see certain customers, but all products. If I belong to both, I effectively can see all customers and all products. But this video is already pretty long. So I should probably wrap it up. We will have more conversations about role level security, tips and tricks, best practices, some strategies. So stay tuned, there is a lot more to unpack. But that's about it for today. Thank you for stopping by and I'm looking forward to see you come back soon. Thanks, bye.